Item 5 in the order paper is the adjournment. Order, just if members are leaving, as we do it quietly. The proposer of the topic will have 15 minutes. And order, order. The proposer of the topic will have 15 minutes, and all other speakers will have approximately 10 minutes. I call Mr. Robin Newton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And, uh, can I thank you for being here uh, this evening? Well, I know that you had uh, other choices that you could have made, so I'm grateful to you for that. Um, and can I also thank the Minister um, for staying behind uh, for an adjournment debate, when indeed in many ways, uh, given the pressures he's been under today and the very serious matters of the budget that have been uh, debated, uh, and just indeed the time that he was uh, in the chamber, I I'm grateful for him uh, to, to stay behind and talk about what is essentially essentially a constituency matter, or at least that's how it's perceived. But indeed, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, I don't believe that the use of Stormont Estate is something that uh, can be confined uh, to East Belfast. I would believe that it is a jewel in the crown of uh, East Belfast, Belfast, and indeed uh, a jewel in the crown of Northern Ireland as a whole. I just want to, before I, I would like to pay tribute uh, to the ground staff and the, the rangers uh, who look after this estate, and indeed pay tribute to their skill, um, their knowledge um, uh, of, of the estate. And indeed, in many ways, because I have spoken to them, uh, as I am a frequent user of the estate, indeed their commitment, because for many of them, the commitment to the work that they do goes beyond uh, just their daily job. It is something they have a, have a, a, a fondness for. And indeed, the grounds are an asset uh, and indeed a feature uh, of our life, certainly in Belfast, and indeed they contribute in many, many ways to their quality of, of life, uh, certainly in, in this locale. But really just to say a few things, Mr. Speaker, about the history, about the potential, and indeed about the uniqueness uh, of the grounds. I don't think there are any other uh, seats of government that have such a magnificent setting nor do I believe there are any other seats of government that have been attributed the status of green flag status, reflecting uh, just the park type uh, quality of these, these grounds. However, I do believe that there is more that could be done to realize, fully realize the potential of the Stormont Estate. And I do recognize that um, this is a working uh, a state. It is where people come on a daily basis, five days a week, some of them six days a week, to actually do uh, their business. It also is a through traffic uh, estate, um, and indeed sometimes it's like a huge car park, given the, uh, the nature and the interest of what is uh, on in, in this chamber. But I suppose if you reflect, uh, Mr. Speaker, um, as this uh, assembly got underway, um, we did not have uh, the opening up of parliament buildings that we do have today. Uh, and that's in many ways thanks to the work of the Speaker's office uh, that that came about. And it's very much the professional way in which the educational uh, uh, unit uh, deal with our school children. But those tours and the educational work very much contribute to the um, well-being, the feeling and indeed the use of, of this building and, and contribute to again 
uh, an aspect of life uh, in Northern Ireland. So if I take what is happening inside the building and reflect on what might just happen on the outside of the building within the grounds uh, of the estate, and indeed we all know uh, about the history of this site, or we should know about the history of this site and the features of this site. But Mr. Douglas and I were at a meeting on Friday night. And I would say, Mr. Speaker, I have been surprised at the interest that the title, The Use of Stormont Grounds, has. And anyway, it was, was raised with us on Friday night. And in just asking the question, how many people could identify features of the grounds? There were two people who really, out of a group of 40, who really had any knowledge of the grounds of Stormont. But it contains within these grounds many, many features that are of historical nature or of, of other aspects of. I mean, how many people in the public know about Craig Evans' tomb being in the grounds of Stormont? And there aren't that many. How many people know about the bomb site where the German bombers got closest to bombing this? How many people have actually looked at it, reflected on it uh, as, as, as that? And Carson's statue being that dominant feature uh, of the estate. But how many people actually know about the Gleaner statue and the history of the Gleaner statue? And although it is featured, uh, Mr. Speaker, it is featured in publications that are put out by the, by the Assembly. How many people know that it was originally created as a sculptor that embraces a man and woman uh, embracing each other across barbed wire, describing the inspiration for the piece? The sculptor was originally conceived in the aftermath of the war. And, who, and how many people know about that statue and the impact and the importance of that statue, not only just in a Northern Ireland context, but in a much, much wider context. The wildlife that's on the estate is also an important aspect and presents us with an opportunity for our school children, for our scout-type organisations, the Boys Brigade type organisations, Girl Guides, all of those. And the wildlife includes a, a wide variety of birds. And indeed, recently an otter spotted on the estate and red squirrels and the work that's being done in the estate to try and protect that red squirrels. All of those of interest to young people as part of their education, whether at school or whether in, in youth groups. Trees, the strawberry and the flora, and uh, indeed the most predominant feature, the lined trees up the mall, indeed that they are now somewhere around 80 years, years of age. I suppose we could look also at the, the uh, Gleaner statue and the importance of that statue. We look at it in the, the sense of it nearly stands in contrast. It, uh, it's actually in terms of um, the Gleaner uh, sculptor by, by John Knox. I don't think it's the John Knox of Protestant uh, uh, historical importance, but John Knox. Originally exhibited as part of the 1951 Festival of Britain, the sculptor shows a woman on a bended knee gathering with the inscription, Thrift is a gleaner behind all human effort. Since they're in there since 1951, having come from that, that exhibition, we're approaching 196, we're in 1916 and the importance of that from many perspectives, importance of it from many perspectives. And how many people actually either formally or informally visit the Battle of the Somme, um, uh, granite stone, which is placed uh, with a group of mature uh, cedar trees, 
uh, six cedar trees, I believe, and the stone is follow with the following ins inscription. This group of traders presented a memory of the 36th Ulster Division by Major General Sir C. Herbert Powell, who raised it in 1948. A significant feature of the history of, of this, this, this province. So there are many aspects, uh, Mr. Speaker, that, that, um, that are, are important. If we turn to the children's playground, um, which uh, it was the Mo Molan children's playground, I didn't much agree with a lot of Ms. Molan's uh, uh, politics, but I do say that she has left a legacy, a legacy within this estate in terms of what she created in terms of the trails through the estate, through the wooded areas, uh, and indeed the, the uh, forest uh, trail up behind uh, this building. But indeed, in creating the playground, she had probably created what is the best playground in the whole of Northern Ireland. It was obviously done to meet the international standards that indeed that the European Union demands of children's playgrounds today. But a playground that is locked up at a certain time each night, and maybe rightly it has to be under the certain circumstances, maybe it has to be locked up each night. But it is a playground that has more potential than only allowing children, and I want to encourage children, as many children as possible to use it, but it has also the potential for organisational use, be that again by uh, groups of scouts, cubs, um, boys brigade, or indeed local schools to use. It's a very safe environment. It's attractive uh, and it's um, well out of the way um, of all traffic. Um, and in fact, it, it just couldn't, couldn't be safer. When I was asked about this, and I said earlier, Mr. Speaker, about the interest, people stopped me in the estate and uh, stopped me in the corridor and asked, what do you mean by the use of the estate? And I was kind of joking with them, and I said, well, we need to measure the number of dogs coming in. We need to measure the number of dogs going out. And they should all be chipped. And they, you know, only, only people with... Uh, uh, dogs that have been registered with the council should, should be allowed in to, to this. But obviously, the dog walking, and there's been some controversy around uh, the dog walking, and we created um, that feature which is referred to as the bull ring for, for dogs uh, to be exercised. So I suppose, uh, Mr. Speaker, what I'm saying really is that we have, I believe, this jewel in the crown, this asset which is sitting on our doorstep, which if we compared it with the use of the building and the super work that is being done on the tours and the educational facility in the building, then we need to benchmark it against that, this internal work and see what we can do about actually bringing uh, a greater interest uh, to it. And, and who would be interested? And I do think the general public uh, would be interested. I live in close proximity to the site. I walk here during the summer months and it's amazing the number of foreign visitors that you meet in these grounds. Now, many of it is because there is an international hotel on the other side of the road and visitors coming there, finding themselves at maybe six, seven, eight o'clock at night, and in the summertime the grounds are still open, walk the grounds. You frequently get an opportunity to speak with them, and they are all extremely complimentary. But there is nothing, Mr. Speaker, that allows them to have a proper guided tour of the facility. Nothing to, to allow that to happen. And I do believe since that, those are the circumstances that it is a potential for us to do more uh, in that sense. Schools and education, I've already referred to the wildlife, the trees, the fauna, the fauna, 
that, that, it, that is all there to allow the likes of the youth groups or the boys' brigade or the schools, schools, schools doing their vocational qualifications, their academic qualifications in that area, or indeed just for children to be allowed formally, formally to enjoy, enjoy the site, because there are many, many uh, groups of children that do come just as a group of children uh, and enjoy the site. We do know that there's been a history of large concerts on the site, and initially, initially when uh, Mo Molan actually started them, uh, one of them in particular was so controversial that, uh, and I know I got 300 letters of objection to that. Now, we moved away from that, we learned a lesson from that, and subsequent concerts have not been uh, controversial. I'm not talking about that kind of major event, Mr. Speaker. I'm talking about events you saw that would not, would not annoy the neighbours, would not bring any form of, of, of disruption uh, to, 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 to the area. But indeed, um, so I'm not talking about promoting uh, large events. I'm talking about largely uh, what are small, um, small groups using this. I'll finish with this, Mr. Speaker. The grounds are an asset. They add to the work of the Assembly and the opening up of Parliament buildings. They allow for the promotion of the Assembly, and in many ways a goodwill and an, ident an identification. It may be, I only use the words, it may be that it has the potential to create a small number of jobs at the same time. It certainly has the potential to add to our tourism and visitor offer, and it has the ability to add to the quality of life for those who live in the locale. It's a feature, I think, and I do believe that we are all rightly proud of, a feature we're all rightly proud of, and indeed, again, I'll finish by paying uh, tribute to the excellent work done by the ground staff. Um, let me just mention, Mr. Speaker, that I uh, very quickly, car parking, I know, has been a problem in the past, and that may be an issue that might need, might need to be addressed in the future. Thank you. Thank you. And I call Mr. Andy Allen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I welcome the opportunity to speak in this debate, and indeed, I would like to place on record my thanks and appreciation to all the staff indeed inside this building and the outside and the estate who worked tremendously hard in making sure that these facilities are in great shape. In the years since the Good Friday Agreement and the coming of relative peace, this estate and the building have seen many events, such events like the Red Bull Crouched Ice event, which has seen many spectators from right across Northern Ireland coming. It's seen the Ulster Cent Centenary Parade. It's seen the brawl in the hall, which seen local boxing clubs come into the Great Hall and put on a spectacular boxing night, including a local East Belfast boxing club. Stormington Estate is open to the public for recreation, walking and fitness trails, charitable events and the restaurant. Indeed, as already has been mentioned, we have a state-of-the-art playground, which has all the normal facilities that you would see in a playground. It has areas for parents to rest while watching their children. It has barbecue facilities and picnic tables. It also is enclosed in, it's fenced in, and it has CCTV that is monitored by the control room. The general public can also avail of tours of parliament buildings, which is an opportunity to showcase this magnificent building and learn about its history. I would also like to place on record my delight that this great building is being made more accessible for those with disabilities. Indeed, we've seen the more disabled car parking facilities at the east and west entrances after campaigning from me coming into this assembly. And indeed, I'm aware that there's a paper going in front of the assembly commission to look at other modifications to this building, and I welcome that. We must work together in ensuring there, these marvellous facilities are fully accessible to all. Promoting what is available and how to access it is key. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, and it comes to Chris Little. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I welcome the opportunity uh, to contribute to this debate on the use of Stormont Estate. The Parliament Buildings is an iconic building uh, in Northern Ireland and internationally, and indeed the surrounding state is a, a beautifully uh, managed and kept estate. And I too would pay tribute to the staff in Parliament Buildings and on Stormont Estate for the hard work uh, and excellence that they bring uh, to this place. The Stormont Estate belongs to the public, uh, and I do believe, as stewards uh, of the Assembly, that it is our responsibility to maximise the public benefit of it for everyone in our community. Stormont Estate has significant potential. It has significant economic and tourist potential. Uh, we have seen a number of world-class events associated with Stormont Estate. I think of uh, Giro d'Italia in 2014, and I remember lining the route uh, of uh, the competition in 2014. Uh, and what a, a world-class event that were hosted in this estate, and the, the atmosphere that it generated, not only uh, here uh, in, in Belfast, but right across the, the community. We have uh, had the, the Crushed Ice event, and we have had international concerts as well. And I think, as other members have set out, that whilst it's important that we seek to host events of that scale, it is important that we keep paramount uh, the concern of the amenity of the local community and residents in the surrounding area when delivering these events. Stormont Estate has huge civic potential. There have been a widespread number of charitable events on the estate. I think of events like Run Her, Run in the Dark, uh, events that I had the privilege to sponsor myself, uh, Chest, Heart and Stroke, and Strandtown Primary School running event. And I thank Principal McLenahan for uh, agreeing to run around with me in relation to that particular event. I think he had to slow down significantly. My running pace isn't what it used to be, Mr. Speaker. Um, and also events such as the Strive for Five Square Wheel Cycle Club, who are based in Moy and undertake an Atlantic Coast to Titanic Coast cycle, which finished at Stormont Estate on a number of occasions to raise awareness and funds for Diabetes UK. Stormont Estate also has significant community benefit potential. Uh, there are a widespread uh, number of events that encourage community and uh, volunteer activity. It was a privilege of mine to play a very small part in helping to establish Park Run on the Stormont Estate, and I pay tribute to volunteers like Mel Boyle and the Park Run staff uh, who were able to uh, establish an all-ability opportunity for people uh, in the local community to engage in a, a 5K run every Saturday morning here on Stormont Estate. Park Run is a, a free weekly 5K time run open to everyone. Uh, and it's a safe, easy and fun to take part in. It has real health benefits. It encourages volunteering. It encourages community cohesion. And I was glad to be joined by uh, Marcino Muller uh, at the inaugural event in, in August of last year. Uh, and it, it really is just a great way to have fun, to get healthy and to meet new people. And I, I think it is only right that Storm the State facilitates those type of events uh, for our local community. Um, the, on the 16th of January last, uh, there were 172 uh, participants in Storm of the State Park Run, and it's my understanding that on New Year's Day, a new record for Park Run in Northern Ireland was set when there were over 500 runners uh, participating in that particular event. So I would commend the vision of, I believe, now retired uh, Stormont Estate Manager Sam McCready uh, for the work that he did with the, the volunteers uh, and staff for Park Run in permitting that type of event to, to take place and to showcase the potential uh, of, of the Stormont Estate. I commend the, the new estate management team, who I believe are providing ongoing valuable assistance uh, to ensure that the success of Stormont Estate Park Run continues. I understand there are a few park runners uh, on the estate management team, uh, and I'm, I'm grateful for the ongoing work that uh, is happening in that regard. There are many other assets to Stormont Estate as well. Mo Molan uh, Peace Park Children's Playground has been mentioned, uh, and I 
uh, confess to uh, making use of that playground on uh, a regular basis with my own children, uh, perhaps getting too involved and uh, enjoying the facilities more than I should myself as well. Um, also think of the, the reconciliation and the reflection zone on Stormont Estate as well. And I know that there are many uh, church groups who come to Stormont Estate uh, to reflect and to pray for the health and well-being uh, of the government here and, and of our community. I think also of the pavilion facility, uh, which is associated with the Northern Ireland Civil Service Sports Association and the play ball facility, uh, which is opening up Stormont Estate for uh, sporting potential for people across our community uh, and has hosted international world-class uh, cricket match events as well. Uh, it's my understanding that that organisation uh, is in need of assistance from the Department for Finance and Personnel to ensure that that particular aspect of Stormont Estate is as accessible as possible uh, to the public, for, particularly from the Upper, upper Newton Arch Road entrance area. And hopefully that's something that the Minister can uh, commit to work with, given the, the good, positive uh, working relationship that the estate management team has contributed to a wide range of uh, provision on the estate. In conclusion, Mr Speaker, Stormont Estate does have significant economic, tourist, community, health, sporting potential on a local, regional and an international level. And I and my party are wholly committed to contributing everything that we can to realise this potential and ensure that we maximise the public benefit of this estate for everyone in our community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I am uh, pleased to participate in this debate tonight. Uh, about the Stormont Estate. And I thank my colleague Rob Newton for, for bringing us here tonight. And also, um, could thank you, Mr. Speaker, for, um, for, for attending. I could also thank the Minister. For, I think it's his first adjournment debate, and I wish him well in his new role um, as a Minister. When I was first elected four and a half years ago, um, in the first couple of years, I would have had, um, hosted a number of community and voluntary groups senior citizens groups um, to Stormont here. And very often I'd ask them the question, how many of you have actually been to the Stormont estate, been to Stormont building? And, and for most of them, it was their first, first opportunity um, to be here. And I would certainly say that for many years that this estate was a preserve of the chosen few, Mr. Speaker, to be quite honest. Thankfully, that is changing. And I suppose over this past, um, past couple of years, I see a growing number of people um, who do come in, in the estate and do come, come to Stormont. And it's sad that, as I say, that many of those people, um, I think quite a number of people, and I'm looking at East Belfast, who have never been um, um, in this building, never been um, in this estate. So that's one of the things we need to look at. How do we encourage people um, to, to come along here? I also want to commend the, the events office on the tours that they, they have here. Um, they do an excellent job, and I am sure the minister will confirm um, maybe in his notes just the, the growing numbers that come to this building and, and associate with the estate it's, itself. And while I understand the need to safeguard and preserve this wonderful building and the majestic natural environment of woodland and parkland, Nonetheless, I believe we should support well-managed events and encourage more visitors. And I make that point because, in one sense, I think as my, my colleague uh, Chris Little said, this estate belongs to the people. And I think we tend to forget that we are the custodians of this estate. It doesn't belong to the members um, of this assembly. And sometimes I host events up here, and I would say to people, great to see you here, because a lot of people would say to me, it's wonderful, thank you for inviting us up here. And I say, look, this place belongs to you, belongs to the people, and let's not um, forget that. On a negative note, last summer, one of my constituents was getting married, and her father contacted me and asked, could she use the Stormont Castle as a backdrop for uh, photographs. And to be quite honest, Mr. Speaker, I came up against a brick wall. 
it was literally impossible to get agreement from a whole range of sources. For just to get a couple up here, two of them in a car, up for a few photographs for 10, 15 minutes. And I must say that eventually um, I succeeded, and, and um, I want to pay tribute to Martin Muller, who um, helped um, to get an agreement all round. And I think that was actually the first wedding that the, the, uh, a bride and bridegroom were able to get their photographs taken up here. I think that's a shame, to be quite honest. Why were blocking people coming to get a photograph for 10 minutes? Now I understand there's security and all that as well, but that family, they were willing to pay for, to, to come in and pay, pay whatever. So maybe the, the minister um, will, will, will look at that to see if there's some way that we can be a bit more flexible when people want, want to use that um, for wedding photographs. Um, <clears throat> but the reality is that many people, as has been said before, use this, this, this place. So let me just quote the user. Uh, I read this earlier on today. Somebody that uses this building, he said, I walk Stormont Grounds at least three times a week. I never get bored. <laughs> the trees, squirrels and magpies are fantastic, and I never mentioned that the magpies. The water lying under the trees at this time of year looks so beautiful, and the kids love the play park. Accent slain when the snow comes. And I, and I thought, that's a lovely quote. And secondly, um, in terms of tourism, and again, uh, I, I got another lovely quote today from TripAdvisor, someone who had been to the estate, and said, they had a wonderful t tour before Christmas and loved it. The grounds are beautiful and the view is amazing. Well worth a visit. Now, that's TripAdvisor. Tell the rest of the world, come to Stormont. And, Mr. Speaker, I think there, there's a great opportunity to add value in terms of tourism. And we're promoting tourism right across Northern Ireland um, and, and beyond. And let me just quote you um, just a few figures from the East Side Arts Festival, a local initiative that was uh, with many volunteers have been um, involved, and um, one of the events that I hosted up here along with the Derry Minister was to, for a hundred out-of-state visitors, people from all over the world, um, come to East Belfast, come to Stormont. And one of the people that spoke was from New Zealand, and he was, he, he was the main speaker. But in terms of the East Side, Side Arts Festival, and specifically Van Morrison, and I'm sure you all remember the, the Live on Cypress Avenue event, Using feedback from surveys and, and comment cards, every stay in Northern Ireland from that event, and many of the people um, came here, the um, Republic of Ireland, Great Britain and International was 7.2 days per, um, per person. Visitors came from 19 different countries, so we had people from all across the world um, come up here. And the reason why I mention this is because there's an opportunity for us to add value, to link in to um, other tourism. And, and to promote tourism, because I think it was my colleague Rob Newton had said that visitors who come to the Stormont Hotel, they may want to go out and visit Titanic Belfast, go to Jan's Causeway, yeah. but if you're like me, oh, it's a lovely part of the world, uh, but if you're like me, if, if you're um, overseas, whatever, it's good to do all those trips, but some days you just want to get out, go for a nice walk, clear your head and just sit um, and relax. And the visitor numbers were locally, nearly 10,000 visitors locally came to the Eastside Arts Festival. Many of them came here. Uh, rest of Northern Ireland, nearly 2,000. Great Britain overseas, nearly 4,000 people. So, Mr. Mr. Speaker, what I'm saying is that let's see where we can have opportunities, explore opportunities to build on what we, we've already done here and, and, and encourage people to use this uh, beautiful building. Some people mentioned some of the events and some of the activities that have taken place here. But who can um, forget, nobody's mentioned this, that wonderful day on the 27th of July uh, 2012 when 20,000 ticket holders converge on the estate to see Her Majesty the Queen and all her splendour. And the reason I get excited is that we have such a wonderful asset but let's not hide our light under a bushel. As I mentioned earlier, 
there is a huge number of people who have never had the pleasure of coming through those gates. And Mr Speaker, my dream would be to see the Northern Ireland football team this summer coming through those gates. I am sure you would like to see the Republic of Ireland football team coming through those gates on an open top bus driving up the Prince of Wales Avenue with the European Championship. What a dream come true. Um, and again, some people mention other, other events, but if we go back to 1988, who can forget Sir Elton John coming to uh, the Stormont? And I think it was well managed, and I know there are difficulties about noise pollution uh, with neighbours, and we've had some discussions with neighbours over the years, including my colleague uh, Rob Newton here as one of our neighbours of Stormont. So I would personally like to see similar events uh, in the future. And as my colleague uh, Gordon Dunn said in a way, don't forget to mention the Circuit of Ireland rally, because they come up here, and that was a, a great event. Um, and again, I understand the problems with, with crowd control, but let's get those events well managed. So I support, I'm delighted that the, my, my colleague has brought this um, to, to, to the floor, and I would support the Minister and some of the ideas that have been challenged tonight. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I want to take the opportunity to congratulate the Minister on his elevation. I'm told that in the long negotiation about taking this job, he says, I want to be present for the adjournment debate on the storm at the state. And you've had that glamour engagement tonight. I want to thank, uh, the as well. the and I want to thank uh, my colleague Robin Newton for introducing this issue. And I, and I asked Sinn Féin, could I speak on this? Because I believe very strongly that the, the building Parliament buildings in the estate are very much a great asset of our community, great treasure of, of the city of Belfast. And I want to echo the comments made uh, by my, my, my friend and colleague, Mr. Douglas, that we need to have maximum use of the estate. Every morning when I come in, uh, Mr. Speaker, I know you're not, you don't follow Twitter, but every morning when I come in, I take a picture of the estate. And um, there was a fog rolling in this morning, but I'm glad to see that disappeared, it disappeared during the day. Uh, but I like to see people in that picture, and for me, that's the test of whether or not this is a people's estate and a people's building. And if I take a picture in the morning and there aren't people about, then, then my heart sinks because really the uh, test of, of our ability to throw the, the building and the estate open is there should be people ar around and be seen and running and walking and walking their dogs and, and, and admiring the place and tourists, as Mr. Newton said, here. And uh, for, uh, for all of us, I think we want to see that maximised in the time ahead. Um, Sammy had to go through uh, a number of hoops to try and get a, a wedding picture at the castle. Uh, I want to uh, pay tribute to the staff, the generosity of the staff in this building. Of course, the wonderful ground staff we have who make the, the uh, estate look magnificent, but also the generosity. The ushers who are here, the cafe staff, uh, the tour staff, the education staff, the grace, the generosity with which they welcome people is, is truly tremendous and makes it fun and enjoyable uh, to visit the estate and to visit the building. But there are still a number of small uh, restrictions. One is, Mr Speaker, you may not know, but when visitors come into the chamber, they're not allowed to sit in the Speaker's chair. And maybe in the time ahead, someone will look at that. I don't know if you know that's a rule or not. Uh, at City Hall, that's the big thrill. That is the big money uh, that you get to sit. <laughs> the thrill of City Hall is sitting in the Lord Mayor's chair, and, and certainly here, what I would ask the, the Minister to do is look, where we can say yes to people, to increase use, we should do that. Uh, where we can stretch ourselves, that you know, there's always a reason to say no, but we can stretch ourselves to increase usage. I think that would be a victory for us. Anything which increases ownership of the place, anything which makes people have a higher regard for Stormont and its, and, its, uh, and its representatives, I think would be a good thing. Two last points. Um, we don't have any shelters at the bus stops. And, and I know the Minister will get that sorted. Four bus stops, no shelters. Uh, and we are trying to encourage uh, people to access uh, Parliament buildings in the States without having to use, uh, their, their, uh, use a car. Uh, secondly, of course I would. Uh, the members made a, a very, some very good points, sir. Um, certainly, Sustrans are now looking at to, um, having bicycles here, a bicycle hub here, um, not just for the tourists, but also for the members as well. And would the member agree with me that would be an excellent idea? That would be first class. Anything that Sustrans is involved in, you can sign me up for. Um, but I want to make that point about bus stops. I want to make the point about disability access. Uh, Mr. Andy Allen has pointed out, in my view, how, how, how poor 
disability access was, and it's not his job to get it sorted out. In fact, it's an indictment of us that it wasn't sorted out uh, for other wheelchair users and for him as well. And it's absolutely imperative that uh, we measure up, we shape up, and we make sure that if you're a wheelchair user, you have the exact same access as everyone else in this building. And I hope that will happen in the time ahead. Uh, uh, Mr Little mentioned the park run, um, and I know his medical team are a bit worried about of his advanced years taking part in the park run, but I, I was glad it was a victory for, for modern science. He was able to finish the park run. Um, but an interesting point about the Saturday morning park run, the biggest ever park run was on New Year's Day, as you said. They had 500 tags, little tags, 514 took part. Uh, and I, that shows that when we allow people to take ownership of these, this building and the, this estate, they will do so, and I, and I, and I wish them well in, in the time ahead. My last suggestion is that uh, we have in, in West Belfast a famous uh, flaneur, a famous tour guide and walker, Tom Hartley. And I see in Robin Newton the Tom Hartley of the Storm of the State because I would go on a walk with him to see all the different uh, icons of Storm of the Imagine, plus the GAA tree, of course. But I think that there may be and a little birdie tells me that he's been selected again, so I presume he'll be returning in May. There may be a future in Mr Newton as, as, as I don't know if in your chair or not after the, after the break, as it were. But there may be a little job in Moonlight and as a tour guide as well in the storm of the state. Carl Morgan. Personnel, Mr Mervyn Story, who sat through all of that. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, <coughs> Mr Speaker. And I have to say I have enjoyed the opportunity to come uh, and listen to the members uh, who have contributed. And there are a few things that have been raised during the course of the debate that I want to return to. Uh, I will only make this as a, as a preliminary uh, comment, and that is that we need to draw a distinction, and it is maybe something we need to look at, between the Commission, which has a responsibility for this building, and the, my department, which has a responsibility beyond uh, the railings in terms of the estate. And sometimes those uh, particular uh, barriers can become an impediment because there are things that uh, there are priorities that uh, have to come to the Commission and therefore the Commission has its own uh, responsibilities. But I, I'll, I'll work my way through some of the comments I want to make and then we'll come back to some of the other uh, comments that have been made during the debate. First of all, can I thank uh, the member for uh, initiating this uh, debate in relation to the storm of the state and to commend him for uh, securing this debate this <coughs> evening. I'm grateful to my friend and colleague Robin for seeking to ensure that the marvellous facility that is the storm of the state is used to the maximum benefit of the community. Uh, although I have to say I think he should have declared an interest uh, because uh, he, he doesn't live too far from the estate. Uh, and, uh, it's probably, we're in his bike garden or else he's uh, you know, I'm not sure what way it is, but I particularly welcome the opportunity for the, uh, the debate affords us to take the views of members on how we might move forward with the use of the estate in the future, and, and I think we'll have something positive to say in relation to that. Storm of the estate could be described as a mixture of country park and working area. We are here holding this debate, taking forward the business of government, along with something in the region of 2,500 civil servants surrounded by some iconic and historic buildings and all sited within the most beautiful and majestic natural environment, which has been already alluded to by most contributors. The original land for the estate was purchased in 1921 for the princely sum of £20,000.344, and the estate grew continuously up to the 1960s to what we see today. Indeed, if you go on to the website of the executive, you'll find uh, an interesting history of uh, Stormont uh, Castle uh, and the Reverend John Keeland uh, and the history that was behind that particular building. Uh, just even in some, uh, just to prove that I do more preparation than just my officials do in relation to this, uh, you'll find information on two websites, and I think that's an issue that we'll, we'll have to look at. One is in relation to the Stormont uh, Assembly, which is uh, under the jurisdiction of the Commission, and the other is in relation to the Northern Ireland Executive. The Assembly's website is very good and gives pictures and, and additional information, and I commend those who have been responsible for that, for the work that they've done. 
As well as the Assembly building, we have the castle, as we have referred to, and very, uh, of various lineage, over 400 acres of land, grassland and woodland, and a formal uh, processional avenue. The double rows of red twig limes that has already been referred to that flank the Prince of Wales Avenue are the were originally planted uh, trees and are over 80 years old, and in fact some of the original forested areas dating back to 1830 are still in existence. The state has acquired the green flag status, and careful management means that our wooded grounds are fast becoming an important educational site. And our holy state is an important tourism and heritage site, and that has been made reference to already. I hope I sound proud of this estate because I think we all have a right to be proud of what we have. Uh, and sometimes I think we become accustomed. And, uh, it's uh, interesting to hear uh, the comments of the member for South Belfast in terms of taking a, a, a picture of this every day. And I think we come here and we can easily uh, forget just the pleasure and the privilege that it is ours to come to what is a very iconic building but also set in the most stunning of surroundings. I am convinced that none of us would wish to consider anything that would have significant and ongoing impact on the estate, and that means that we need to ensure that whatever it is in terms of events, in terms of uh, the work that is carried out on the estate, that is done in a way which is uh, caring, it is done in a way which is reflective of our commitment to the environment and to uh, ensuring that we enhance rather than create any difficulties. We have to reflect that the estate is open 365 days a year. The traffic arrangements and the comings and goings throughout the average day would actually equate to one of our small towns. Uh, we run a myriad of events every year, some uh, 37 events uh, per year, uh, from the smallest Boy Scouts charity run uh, to the major international events like the Giro and the Crashed Ice event, which all brings uh, their own particular complications and, and their own particular challenges. And I think we've already made reference to some of that. I think uh, Robin had raised the issue particularly in relation to what more could be done in terms of the promotion with children and, and youth organisations. And uh, more than happy to uh, task my estate team with considering how we can promote the use of the estate uh, amongst youth organisations. And, and I think one of the issues that we also may need to raise with uh, the Commission here and with the department that is responsible for the tours, and that is, uh, while the tours in this building are primarily in relation to uh, this building, uh, I think there's a lot of people who come and go away and they don't actually uh, have a full understanding of what is still available. And to that end, uh, there is some work that has been done to produce uh, a, a leaflet uh, which would give, and even during the course of this debate, there are some other things that uh, have come to mind that we might want to amend this and add to it. And we will, after this debate, take uh, cognizance of what more we can uh, put in this, uh, and that will be produced shortly so that it will be available for uh, people as a, a point of reference. It will also be online, which is also helpful uh, for those people who are uh, more uh, amenable to uh, using modern technology. I have to say I always feel safe when I have a piece of paper in my hand uh, uh, rather than an iPad or a computer. And so uh, I'm quite happy to uh, pursue that issue on behalf of, of the member. Maybe the first step is that we also liaise with the Education Department and the Assembly, and we have a discussion with them around that issue. I think we also, uh, Mr. Speaker, have to be cognizant of the fact that people who live around and nearby the estate have raised in the past concerns. And our neighbours are an important consideration. And to me, uh, I'm particularly keen to ensure that we keep uh, to a minimum any impacts or disruption uh, to their lives, both from the day-to-day -day operation of the estate and any events that we hold. With bigger events, uh, we know, for example, that we have uh, finite parking facilities, and these are often uh, fully utilised. And I also appreciate, and it is an issue that uh, gives us uh, considerable uh, concern as to how we would provide in the future additional car parking, and that is a matter because there are issues that we have to take into consideration uh, as this estate has developed 
over the last number of years, particularly since the, the uh, bringing back of devolution uh, and obviously the opening up of the state. We also want to be sensitive to the needs uh, to ensure that noise levels are kept to a minimum, and we don't want, uh, for example, to ensure we want to, for example, to ensure that events are held within the restricted time periods to ensure that our neighbours are not disturbed. When appropriate to uh, events, we will therefore work closely with all our agencies that might have a responsibility or an interest in the aspects of the safe management or, or traffic management of the surrounding areas, such as transport, NI and the police. That would bring me to the issue that was raised by uh, the member for South Belfast in relation to uh, the bus shelters and the issue of Sustra. And uh, I will have my management team uh, take a, a look at that particular issue. Uh, and I think there is also a, an issue around uh, the, the number of buses. I think, because sometimes I use public transport uh, to come from uh, North Antrim to the, the house, uh, and uh, the train service is something which is outstanding. It's something that we uh, uh, really appreciate and I enjoy using the train. The difficulty then becomes when you have to get the connection. And from memory, I think there's only, I may be wrong, I trust him, I, I'm not placing something in the record that's totally inaccurate, but I think there's only two buses that may service the state in terms of access. Uh, and uh, that can become a particular challenge, and we may need to have a, a conversation with the Minister for Transport in relation to that. It's also worth mentioning that there are two other organisations that occupy part of the state. Assembly Commission, as I've referred to, and the Northern Ireland Civil Service Sports Association. Uh, and uh, in relation to that particular issue, uh, the estate that was raised by uh, my colleague Mr. Little, the estate management team has met with the pavilion management on the issue of access and will continue to work with them to seek a resolution that is acceptable to all. I'm quite happy to keep the member informed uh, as to any other issues that come from that. My officials will continue to liaise with these organisations to ensure that events do not clash and that the areas of the estate for which my department has responsibility are available as appropriate. And also, I will take uh, on, uh, on board the comments that were made by my colleague, Mr. Douglas, uh, around uh, the uh, difficulties that he had in getting uh, wedding photographs taken. I have a wedding this year in my own home. I want to reassure you it is not my own. Uh, I did that 28 years ago. I better not say any more. I'll get myself into trouble. Uh, but I have a daughter getting married uh, later on this year. Uh, and I can appreciate uh, that for those that are involved in that particular uh, very special day, uh, coming up against difficulties like that just adds a, an added pressure. Uh, and I will ask my officials to look at that and to see can we have a more streamlined, more open approach to that particular issue, and we'll come back to the member. So, I th yes, so old, yes. I thank the minister for giving way, and I, I extend sincere thanks uh, for his attendance at uh, the debate this evening. I, I would echo the, the calls for a uh, first-class cycle storage facility on the estate. Uh, another issue raised with me was to, to request the presence of a, a defibrillator, uh, given the extent of the events that are going on on the estate now, if indeed that uh, does not already exist, just to put that on the record as well. And, and thank you again, Minister. I thank the member for, for that, and, and I will give an assurance that those are uh, an additional number of issues that we will look at. And what we will do is, following on from this debate and having uh, taken cognizance of all the, the comments that have been made for those members that are present, we will then write to you to give you an update on the issues that we will undertake uh, following on from this debate. So, in conclusion, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, we have to take a historical, environmental and practical concerns into consideration in any discussion about using the estate. But generally, if an event can be approved, it generally will be, and every event is facilitate, facilitated as best as we possibly can. And I want to place on record, as I conclude, uh, Mr. Speaker, my appreciation since coming into office, being made aware that we had uh, this adjournment debate tonight of the immense work that is carried out by the Rangers and by the state staff, and also to include those uh, in relation to the Commission here and those who look after this building. We are well served 
by dedicated and professional staff who give a very good impression of the estate and this building when visitors come. And I trust that we collectively can continue to ensure that the Stormont estate and the Stormont buildings are the jewel in the crown in relation to our tourist product and the history of Northern Ireland. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And thank you all very much. Uh, that was a very interesting debate. The question is that the Assembly do now adjourn. The Assembly is adjourned. Thank you.